This video is one in a series of educational videos produced by the APGA Security and Integrity Foundation to explain the basics of operating a natural gas distribution system. The SIF is a nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting small utilities in the safe operation and maintenance of natural gas piping systems. So you've got a gas stove, water heater, or heating system, and that little blue flame means the gas is flowing. But how did the gas get there? Well, follow along. Most utilities get natural gas from a transmission pipeline. These are usually large diameter, high pressure steel pipelines that receive the gas from production areas and transport it to distribution systems. And according to the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration, there are about 300,000 miles of natural gas transmission pipelines in the U.S. alone. That's enough to circle the globe more than 12 times. From the transmission line, the gas goes through a gate station, where it's transferred to the distribution company. There's a lot of other stuff that goes on in a gate station, like pressure reduction and heating, but this is also where the odorizer, or odorant, odorite, the smelly stuff is usually added. And now it's time to get the gas to the customers. This is done with distribution piping, which falls into two categories. Gas mains, which are usually 2 to 12 inches in diameter and transport gas through the service area, and service lines, the half-inch to two-inch lines that get the gas to the meter at the customer's home. Once it hits the meter, it moves into the house pipes, which are owned by the homeowner, just like the appliances. Sounds simple enough, but you can't just turn the valve and let the gas flow. To make the system work properly from production to pilot light, you have to have pressure. Pressure provides the force that pushes the gas through the pipeline system, and the gas always flows from a point of high pressure to low pressure. So naturally, the pressure is highest at the start of its journey, and is at its lowest when it arrives at the appliance. The pressure in the distribution system is called the MAOP, Maximum Allowable Operating Pressure. The MAOP is determined by the utility and is the pressure that cannot be exceeded without compromising the safety of the pipe. Pressure in the system must be closely monitored and regulated, as fluctuations in customer demand can cause the pressure to rise or drop significantly. Once the gas gets to the house, it's a different story. The typical residential gas pressure is one quarter pound per square inch, or PSIG. But for your appliances, the discussion turns to CFH, or cubic feet per hour, which is how gas flow is measured. For example, the burner on a gas oven typically uses 25 CFH, while a tankless gas water heater can use as much as 200 cubic feet per hour. To keep the pressure in the house piping from dropping too low when an appliance is turned on, built-in pressure regulators open to allow more gas into the system. These pressure regulators are fully automatic and are powered by the gas pressure itself, so no electricity or other power source is required. That means the gas system will continue to operate even during a power failure. And that's it. The journey of natural gas from production point to under that pot of spaghetti on your stove. For more information, visit APGASIF.org or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And for a complete list of videos, go to APGASIF.org slash gas operations safety orientation videos.